All right, good morning. <laughs> uh, my name is Sydney DeMaster. I'm the kids director here. I also volunteer on the worship team, as you just saw. Um, and then I'm also Aaron's wife, if you didn't know that. Um, when I'm not at church, I'm a second grade teacher at North Fond du Lac, and I'm also um, a mom to little Eliza. You've probably seen her running around here. Uh, my faith started young, but it wasn't until college um, that, I, that it really became real for me. I have experience with a lot of different types of faith. I was baptized Catholic, I was raised Methodist, confirmed Lutheran, and then I was baptized again as an adult and married in a non-denominational church, kind of like this one. I grew up in a semi-Christian home. Um, I say that because church and God was very important to my mom, but not so much to my dad. M um, mom and us kids, we went to church every Sunday while dad stayed at home and worked on various projects throughout the house. And even though they didn't both go to church, my two brothers and I grew up in a very loved home. Um, we all got along for the most part, and my parents were strict but very loving um, and supportive of everything that we wanted to do. I was always the good girl in high school. I didn't really partake in the bad things that my friends were doing. I didn't drink. I didn't do drugs. So I went off to college with this good girl mentality and a faith. Um, I went to Ripon College, and I played soccer there. I got a random roommate my freshman year, and she was on the soccer team with me. And we instantly became best friends. This is Taylor. Um, Taylor is just like me. We loved soccer, school, eating, going to bed early. Instead of going out on a Friday night, we would stay in and have movie night and be in by bed by 10 o'clock. We went to church together on Sundays, and we had tons of meaningful conversations from everything, from family to friends, boys, and we laughed nonstop. We were best friends. The school year ended. And we both wanted to save money, um, so we got an apartment for the next year off campus. We moved our stuff in on the last day of school, and then my parents came and took me home for the summer. And then in July of that summer, Taylor was driving with her siblings to El Paso, Texas to visit her grandparents. And at 7 a.m. in the morning, she crossed the center line and was hit head on by an oncoming semi. She died instantly, and her two siblings were in critical care. I was destroyed. Up until that point, I had a very comfortable life. I had the only funeral I'd ever been to was a distant friend's grandpa's, and I was not pre prepared for that level of grief. Honestly, I don't think anyone ever is or can be. I'm still not sure how I did it, but with the help of my help and support of my family, that summer I buried my best friend. I emptied the apartment of all the stuff that we had just moved into, and I went back to Ripon College and played soccer again. I got another random roommate who was okay but definitely no Taylor. Um, and that started a very hard and dark time in my life. That Christian safety net that I thought I had been building my entire life was not strong enough to catch me. I broke through that net and I fell all the way to the bottom. I tried things I'd never tried before because that's not what good Christian girls do. And eventually, after about two years, I kind of hit rock bottom. And that's when a friend from high school called me and asked me on a women's retreat weekend with the church that I went to back home. So I decided to give the Christian thing a try again because what I was doing wasn't working. And uh, that trip was amazing. I encountered God on that trip, and he healed a lot of brokenness and frustration and hurt that I didn't even know that I had. Um, I got back to Ripon, and I decided to go back to church again. I went back to church. Um, I went back to the church that Taylor and I had gone to. But not being social and being a super introvert kind of slipped in and out of the back for three weeks until I decided that wasn't good enough. I needed to get plugged in. I needed to meet people. And I needed to get in a Bible study or a small group. Um, I noticed in their bulletin that they were having a day mission trip to Milwaukee coming up. Um, you left in the morning. We were back by supper. So I decided to do it, um, force myself to meet people. So I emailed Aaron DeMaster at Ribbon Church, and I signed myself up. Um, and that mission trip changed everything for me. I met friends that I still have today, um, and what's crazy is actually how many of those people come to Centerpoint now. Um, I got plugged into a Bible study. I decided to meet with the lead pastor, and I officially became a real Christian, um, knowing full well what it meant this time. And I met Aaron, who is now my husband, and he had all these weird, crazy church planning ideas, <laughs> and it has forever changed the course of my life. Um, dating a youth pastor wasn't always awesome, but Aaron and I's relationship was amazing, and it caused me to go deeper in my faith and continue growing closer to Jesus and trying to follow his ways. That summer, I got baptized also, which was a really meaningful experience for me. After I finished my student teaching, Aaron proposed, and then we got married, and we lived happily ever after. The end. <laughs> Just kidding. Doesn't work like that in life, right? <laughs> 
Um, so that week that we got married um, was actually my first week teaching. Um, and it was crazy and stressful, just like everyone says your first year of teaching is. But I was not prepared for the level of stress that it was. I felt really bad for Aaron because that first whole first year, he came home to me crying so many times on the couch because of how frustrated, stressed, and upset I was. Um, and then, lucky for me, my stress started to show. In February of that year, I actually started to lose my hair. Um, my dad has very severe Graves' disease, which has destroyed his thyroid. And losing your hair is one of the first symptoms. So I got tested immediately, but they said that I was fine. And they had no idea what was going on, but I was still losing hair, a lot of hair. And I was really frustrated. I just wanted to know. I wanted answers. What was wrong with me? How could I make it stop? So many doctor's appointments and months later, I was finally given an answer. I have alopecia. Alopecia is an autoimmune disease that causes your immune system to attack your healthy hair follicles, causing your hair to fall out for no reason. I had my answer, but it didn't help. The hard thing about alopecia is there's no formula for it. Sometimes people get like one spot on their head for a while, and then it goes away, and it never comes back. Um, some people have a couple spots, and those spots never grow hair ever again. Some people get a couple spots, it grows back, and then a couple of years later, it comes back, and they lose every single hair on their head. There are just so many unknowns. The only known that, that they told me is that it's a lifelong disease, so I'll have it forever. Um, so in my prime of my youth, I was losing hair in giant patches on my head. And I was working in a seventh grade classroom with seventh grade boys and girls. It was very stressful, all of it. Stress made it worse, so it made everything way worse, and it was an awful cycle. And then in June, it got to its worst point. I had about 22 bald spots all over my head, ranging in the size from a softball to a dime. And lucky for me, I had that giant one right on top of my head that was extremely hard to cover. However, if I did my hair just right, I could hide it and no one would know until I went outside and the wind started to blow. And it was very painful for me. I started having a lot of problems with self-worth, body issues, bouts of depression. I was hopeless, frustrated that this was happening. I just wanted answers. I wanted to know if I was going to lose all my hair and if I should just buy a wig or shave my head or if it was going to stop falling out and I just needed to be patient. But I didn't get any of those answers and it was really frustrating. Um, I didn't tell anybody about it except my very close family members. Um, so I finally worked up the courage to tell one of my friends about it. And they asked me if I had prayed about it at all. Hmm, such a crazy, simple thing that I had not thought to do. And I called myself a Christian. <laughs> so that night, I went home and I prayed for peace. All the worry and the anxiety and frustration. And I asked God to just give me peace. And it worked. Not right away. It took a couple days and weeks of constant prayer. But finally, I was able to give it completely to God. And you know what? It wasn't awkward anymore. I wasn't as concerned about how I looked because I knew I had a God who loved me, whether I had hair or not. And he took the weight completely off my shoulders, and I was able to be myself again. He gave me the peace that I asked him for, and I was able to move forward. It really taught me about the power of prayer and asking God to be a part of all areas of my life. I was so focused on control and then my lack of control, and I think God was just trying to teach me that he had had the control all along, and I just needed to trust in him. Now, I wish I could say that these two <laughs> big experiences have made me this perfect Christian, and now I have it all together, and I have it all figured out, but that's very far from the truth. <laughs> um, Aaron and I have gone through a lot together since then. I mean, haven't we all? But what these pivotal moments in my life has taught me is that I need to go to God first, not as an afterthought, not as something a friend should ask, um, but I need to go to him first on my own. And I've found that when I do, the tough situations in my life aren't as tough. Um, because I know he's got it. And all of the good things come from God, and I know God can use all of the crappy situations in life for good. And I've seen that come true on so many different levels and so many different ways in my life. I still have days of doubt, days of not feeling good enough, days where I forget to pray or forget to invite God into my struggles, days where frustration gets the better of me or I get angry or worried or anxious. But I think I'm getting better. And I think that's what he wants for us. He knows I can't be perfect, but I can try my best, and that's what I'm trying to do. And each time I do, each time I pray or ask for peace or ask him to come close, forgive my enemies or show love to the ones I'm angry with, it does become easier. Um, I know that I'm going to have pain 
heartache and heartbreak in the future, but I'm going to try to focus on constantly asking God to be a part of it and walk with me through it. Thank you.